What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel. Yeah, we finally got a haircut. The 7.3, well the black one's actually going to a new home. I'm gonna steal a few last parts off of it. I'm actually gonna take this tan steering wheel. It's definitely shredded, but it's tan. It's got the tan airbag and it's got the tan plastics to go around it. However, in this, we ended up with something else that, long story, you'll still see because I still need Super Duty axles. And we ended up with a set in a completely different fashion. So in the black truck deal, I ended up with this. It's a 5.4 gasser with a ZF5 transmission. Um, there's a lot of issues with this. For what I'm getting out of this, and that really, I'm definitely gonna use the axles off of that. We're losing the black truck today, but like I said, I'm gonna steal a few more parts off of it. Um, like I said, this tan wheel, and then now that I see it, this one has the matching window switches. So definitely gonna steal those, and then I need these. So I need this, this, and these plastics, the airbag, and then this, this kind of interesting wheel. But if you guys remember, here is the interior out of what was the tan Super Duty and is now pink. This truck was probably the best purchase I made because I found everything I needed to complete the pink truck with and now I end up with a lifted 5.4. We didn't do much to this truck but I added an extra set of Harley headlights that I had, put those in. Obviously the interior swap, I was gonna do more to this but I just don't have time for it and now I end up with that instead which is completely on accident. Uh, like I said, I really just needed some Super Duty axles for something that you guys will see in the near-ish future. And I think you guys are really, really going to like it. And it involves something you guys have no idea anything about right now. So just keep that in your mind. All right, guys. Well, quick realization. Ashley's outside handling this part for me. This door panel has the brown armrests. And we're going to swap them. And I'll have brown all the way around with the brown switch panels that I needed. And I know I got to pay for it, but I can find an actual tan steering wheel, whether it's a King Ranch or not, which I may very well try and get a King Ranch or an Expedition wheel and put it in there. But the problem would be is this airbag. So I figured this would probably be the best case scenario instead of swapping 12 steering wheels just to end up with one good one in the end. Two tone steering wheel uh, right here. I mean, it kind of fits, kind of flows, but I, I forgot it was a little ripped and frayed up here, so I just kind of gave up on the wheel itself, but I needed the tan airbag. So now this has the black airbag. And as for these plastics, I could do all that, pop all that out, and then over here, I'm sure it would come out quite easy. But um, I'm almost like, why don't I just get the paint, and paint the ones I have, and actually kind of test out, you know, painting the plastics, because there's a couple dashboards that need painted upcoming here. Um, so I might as well just practice on the pink truck because some plastics dashboard pieces need painted. So um, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint my black ones. And I was gonna say this, as you can see, does not match the wheel. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see they're two different shades. If I do it, I'll probably just take the airbag up to the paint store, paint these to match the tan wheel that I end up with instead of doing these plastics that don't match the wheel anyway and all of that. And then in the process, I could practice painting dash plastics. So that's where my head's at, and I think that's what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you guys how to paint dash plastics. I know how to, but I just haven't done it yet. So um, I think that's what we're gonna do, paint my black ones, the tan to match the wheel, but that's where I'm at. Probably my best case scenario. And however, the good part is, I could go throw these in right now. And then another thing I noticed, I mean, this has been idling for a minute just because of the batteries, let them charge up while they sit. Um, if you look at this, first of all, I think I need new, I don't really need new lights behind the dash anymore because they're light, all light up now with full battery. How funny is that? But um, it doesn't come off cold. So I think a thermostat is probably in order, but I can at least throw these in. Ashley's taking off the other door panel. And now that I got the weather stripping for the other door panel, we can put the other interior door panel on, which is great. But let me throw these on real quick. take it uh i should just put the door panel on shouldn't i uh, but it's just so freaking cold i don't want to but all right i need this uh, an eight mil eight mil and another eight mil and then the weather stripping in my back seat got it
Yeah, guys, it's definitely not the time to uh, be doing any of this. It is freezing outside, and when I say freezing, I mean literally. Um, yeah, literally five feels like negative five. And that wind chill ain't no joke. It is, it is cold. <laughs> really cold <laughs> all right guys well it's actually the next day here our fast is here our rockville amp is here uh we'll get into the four channel in a second hopefully we can throw this in today probably won't throw the fast in in this video because i've seen a lot of you request like a full out install of it um and obviously you could take that into account for different applications everyone's a little different between a cummins a duramax and a power stroke also between the years everything's different install wise on a fuel system however um everything's relatively the same concept so here we have a ford 1999 at 2740 gph this is a zero to 600 horsepower application so or wait correction correction zero so stock to 700 horse application uh, this fast obviously that thing is not 700 horsepower. So this is plenty for what we're gonna do um, We'll go in that install here probably in one of the next videos so we can get this on That truck um, It as you saw at the beginning of this video that thing was outside in like negative temperatures and it, it still cranks long but fires right up so definitely not a glow plug issue and it doesn't like actually you know, do the whole the hard cold start thing. It just takes a long time to crank. So I'm thinking this will solve our low power and part of the long crank issue. And then two new batteries on that will solve the long crank issue in itself. So um, between this and two new batteries, and then I think this is weird because you still use the other fuel filter under the hood because it goes into that um, fuel bowl. I know people delete those. We may just leave it on there and get a new filter for that, but um, yeah, so I think that's gonna solve a lot of our issues. And then here we go, also here is a four channel amp. Uh, this will complete our audio system in the back of this truck. I'm gonna try and bust that out today as well. Um, but that's great, that's finally here. And also just doing some things, got a weighted shift knob from Mishimoto. I'm gonna be honest in a second on this. And then um, the shift knob comes with like reducers and adapters. And then I also ordered a 10 inch shifter extension. It also just fell out of the truck and totally just chipped right there. But one, this purple isn't my purple, so it needs repowder coated anyway. But secondly, um, I don't know how I feel about the super thin knob. I kind of wanted something like weighted but bigger. So I may even get a different knob anyway. But then I also got a 10 inch shifter extension. So I was actually gonna trim this, the shift knob, like entirely, but if this knob isn't the one I'm gonna end up keeping, if I don't like it, then I might as well just wait. So I won't cut this yet and then actually be able to screw it all the way down um, until I decide that if I like this thin knob or not. This was a whole novelty thing. I just wanted to like put the extension on just to see. But like I said, it, I mean, it's weighted, it's like, I don't know how to explain that, but it's weighted. This is pretty good for like a car, but uh, in my instance, um, I kind of want something weighted but larger. So we're gonna actually go throw this on real quick, see how I like it. If I do, I'll throw some uh, throw some lo blue Loctite in there so it doesn't easily spin off. And uh, I mean, just a little bit, and then uh, we'll get back in here and finish the amp install. Alright guys, well, <laughs> I guess this is a teaching lesson. I know this video isn't directed at G56 shift knob removal and all of that, but I was just trying to figure out the nut size before I came out here and um, swapped this because I know there's a nut under here and this thing, no matter how hard you try, this thing will not unscrew. I don't even know why this is a thing, but in Cummins Forum, somebody literally drills the knob. And, I mean, I, I kid you not, drills the knob, takes it out, and it, then it unscrews when, that, when you get to that nut. I, I'm just, uh, my mind is literally blown here. So, G56 shift knobs. On the shift pattern here, if you can see this, obviously reverse, one, two, three, four, five, six. This line in the middle, 
On the other side of reverse, by sixth gear here, underneath, this is all rubber, underneath this, there is literally a, a channel for you to stick a pick in there and pop it out. I've done this once before because when you first get these trucks or a new G56, you drive it for enough time, you'll notice that the shift pattern will go from, when it first comes, it's straight up and down to like upside down. Just from all the twisting and all this in your hand, it moves. I don't know why. But the more the truck gets used, the hot, the cold, this rubber like contracts and then it sticks. So I only had to adjust this thing once. But if you take a pick, right angle pick, small pick, and you go behind the rubber, underneath six gear here, as you can see, you see how it goes right in there? You don't damage your knob or anything. Like the guy said in the forums, he claimed that he, oh, he damaged it. You peel it back and the cap will come out. Now if you stretch the rubber out like I did here, you put a new cap in, obviously you could do this, but like I said, after a while the rubber will eventually contract and go back to what it's supposed to. But yeah, literally right here, there's a little channel for you to do exactly what needs to be done. So don't think you gotta drill the knob out to take that out and obviously if you shove this back in here the correct way this is where you can orient this vertically this if you want to put it upside down whatever um, but that's how you do that and then also in here 15 millimeter nut just like this the knob itself literally twists off So there's a washer and a spacer in there, but yeah, there's your G56 shift knob. Now if I wanted to, and I don't like this weighted one, I could screw this back on here and put it up here, which I very well might. That's gonna be huge. Anyway, um, if I don't like this knob, I can always put that one back on, which I'm, I'm kind of feeling I might. Again, more information for you guys. This is a 10 by 1.5 thread. If you're looking for an aftermarket knob or any of that, it's literally a 10 by 1.5 thread pitch. and then this will screw on. I'll put a link in the description to the shifter extension <laughs> for you guys, but um, obviously ridiculous, but that's what I'm saying is, that's actually pretty sick. Mm -hmm. I just hope it doesn't hit the steering wheel. I don't wanna ruin the plastic threads inside the shift knob, but there we go. So obviously it's just an extension. It doesn't look the prettiest because it's definitely tapered in here to cover. Wow, that's so crazy. It was that low. But um, it's made to do that on purpose. But I just want to see how... Oh my God. First of all, the weighted knob, it literally goes in gear so much easier. I want to see this really quick. This is funny. Four, five, six. Now this is the one that's sketchy. Oh man. Okay, we'll go around the parking lot, but this actually, I don't even mind that. I'm glad, I thought it was gonna hit directly into the steering wheel. Is that three? Yeah, I'm just gonna have to get used to it again. Just need to go a little tighter to not vibrate. I'm gonna put these around so we don't lose them. That's actually funny. That's actually super nice. That is, as dumb as that sounds, I, I get it from the, uh, the, I get it from the semi drivers now. That's that's just randomly nice. Just about to take it down the street real quick. See how we uh, do shifting all the gears. It makes it a little bit difficult with the uh, 
dual disc clutch in there because it wants to go into um, it, it's a little bit more effort to go into gear so you could tell that you're I don't want to say stressing the shifter but like obviously the shifter is it's just pretty long so it's like just whole like aspect of it really isn't even that bad and then with it being weighted it feels pretty darn good actually I'm just gonna have so it likes to rattle off so I just gotta figure out if I like this knob I'm gonna continually tighten it but if I want a different knob then all I got I mean it should go on and be just fine none of the rattle really comes through it it just likes to loosen up for some reason from the vibration from the training so like I said the Loctite will help uh, you know thread table help um, let's see how we are coming to like an intersection here sounds guys this thing shifts a lot nicer like this I don't it, it, although it still takes force to get into gear and stuff it definitely takes a lot a lot less like by far because it's like obviously leverage but it takes so much less effort to get this thing into gear all right, yeah, guys. So I definitely want to pair this with that that B and M. Like, I forget what they call it, but it's it's not really a short throw, but it's kind of like a effortless shifting like box. So kind of want to do that, and then we'll bolt this shifter to that. And then if I when we get down to it, I can also clean this up with some uh, you know heat shrink wrap and make it all look like one piece, not this. And then when we get the knob we want, be able to close this gap but yeah for right now this is pretty sick honestly so um some of the light changes here we'll get another you know shifting pattern for you guys but like I said it's just different and I don't know it's I get the whole semi thing now and although obnoxious not that obnoxious I don't know how to explain that to you guys Is actually quite nice especially that three to four shift oh I said so nice and I said that's the only thing it, it rattles so it needs to tighten consistently but that's no problem with that I'll probably eventually strip out that plastic plug inside of this Mishimoto shift knob which like I said I feel like it's for like a Subaru or something with the same um, pitch pattern because like I said it just vibrate obviously this motor is consistently putting vibrations to this but when I dial in on a knob, we'll get that Loctite down so it doesn't unscrew uh, consistently. drive the thing every time you do something to like a g56 whether it's bigger tires a tune shifter so you got to relearn how to drive the thing every time but this thing's just like other than that rattling issue uh things pretty sick so i'll put the links in the description um for the shifter and the knob if you want the knob like i said i don't i'm not speaking for the knob because i don't really enjoy the knob so far um but I, I, not that I don't enjoy the knob, like I said, I, I could easily trim this and put it on there. So if I end up liking this knob compared to another knob, um, we'll end up with this knob and I'll we'll actually get it on. But I just don't like the fact that there's an insert in it that's literally plastic um, attached to something that, as you can see, 
consistently has motor vibration so all that takes is just a little bit to loose and then you can hear everything inside uh, like the washers and the plates and stuff like that it's just like because it's not a hundred percent tight you could just hear it vibrating itself so as I said you might just have to sit there and consistently tighten this one but till then uh, or till we dial in on a knob there we go and like I said this whole setup right here I think the knob was the most expensive part. This right here is like 14 or 16 bucks, but the link is in the description if you got a G56. Um, like I said, it's just an extension and you don't have to get like one of the actual, I know they have like $125, $8 actual like stainless um, piece that comes up a lot higher. But the only thing with that is, is apparently you hear the clutch rattle a lot more. So this is a good temporary solution. So all those vibrations go through that stainless one and then you can hear the clutch like all the time. So this is a good temporary solution just to figure it out. And as weird as it is, like I said, this has made me understand the semi drivers. It's just nice. Everything falls into place. Literally, it's just more leverage. Easy to shift. That's literally all it is. You, you, and with the weighted knob, if I do recommend a weighted knob no matter what. So if you're gonna put your old, old knob on, it's not gonna be the same exact feel as this, but a weighted knob, oh my gosh, I would do that in a heartbeat. And even, even if I didn't have the extension on here, I should have did a weighted knob a long, long time ago because that's, that is just nice. That really is. All right guys, sorry, it's been a crazy day. We just got all of our metal too for the, um, powder coating racks so you'll see a video soon of us welding that up I was gonna throw the amps in here but like I said things got a little crazy um, and I know I've been telling you oh we're gonna get the audio done but I, I now I really just want to get get you guys the content you deserve so hopefully you enjoyed that little shifter install I will say that it's quite satisfying like beyond satisfying so the links will be in the description um, I do want to figure out something with that shift knob though because I don't like how the threads sit up, and I also want to um, actually get one I can blue Loctite so it doesn't vibrate off. A couple minutes ago, I was also formulating a plan here because the kit car needs to come out of the booth, still in there, and the pink truck needs to go in the booth because like I said, we need to give the bed one more coat of not only clear, but also pink because it's one shade too light, which is uh, literally just I sprayed it too quick trying to go to South Carolina, but. And then the front fender, the bottom little corner that I actually reshot to, the bottom corner underneath, it needs more pink as well. So we're actually pull the whole truck in, tape it off fully, cover the wheels, cover the suspension, cover the track bars, literally. Well, first of all, I gotta take this off. I actually have true Lariat badges now um, for this because it in fact is a Lariat. So um, I got Lariat badges for that, so that one's gotta come off. But this one, this XLT badge came off. Um, when I actually respray this, but this is all good up here. But I just between light and other things down here, this section here down is missing some pink. And then also uh, right here, I need to set this fender right and bolt it in inside the door, and then bolt the second one out so the uh, body is completely flat. So got a little bit there, um, but this needs redone. Like I said, this section down, you'll be able to see if I put a light on it. You can almost see right here. I don't know if you can, but here down it needs a little more pink. So yeah guys, it's gonna be a crazy, crazy next couple weeks getting both of these projects done. And we can jump on the Jeep, the Bronco, all that stuff, waiting for the snow to melt, literally. Here's the four channel amp, as you can see, same as the, the mono block that's in the uh, pink truck right now, but obviously four channels will have our speaker outputs. There's a lot of little things I wanna do and touch up and you know, mess with. I, I was originally gonna build it and then like either sell it or trade it or do something, but now that I've built, put so much work into it and the little bit I've driven it, it's pretty freaking cool. And if, I, uh, if we get the power back that we should, I might rock this and I might take it to a few shows this year um, before we even get to any other point. So that's also really exciting. And obviously fix the Himes on there so it stays straight. But um, like I said, we're, we're hitting the home stretch on this truck, guys. I know a lot of you were like, oh, I wanna see the Ford done. I do too, because the more I move it in and out and drive the thing, it looks so good and I am, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to have that thing done. It's an awesome build, clean build, and I'm ready to drive it. Um, but I'm also ready to get working on other things, because I, like I said, it's just dragging out. And I just said, it's one little thing after another, and then you're like, ugh, I don't want to do it. But um, 
we will. Like I said, the next few videos are gonna be high, action packed. Like I said, the interior will be done and hopefully we can get the fast started in the next video and all of that. But like I said today, I apologize. I was gonna do the audio now, but it just got late with all the stuff that happened and stuff getting dropped off. I just want to, um, I just want to get this video up for you guys and uh, continue the streak of, or well, getting back on the streak of three videos a week because I love it. And I love, I love, I love all of that. I love teaching you guys and I love bringing you guys content and actually making it informative so you guys can learn from it, whether it's painting a kit car, doing a diesel truck, working on a Hellcat, um, whatever it be, you know, welding something, fabbing something up, doing all that. I want all of you to learn something, whether you like cars, trucks, SUVs, Jeeps, um, off-road, on-road, motorcycles, whatever it be, I want to bring you guys informative content and you could take it from whatever platform I'm on and move it across the spectrum. So if you guys enjoyed this video, shoot a thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please get down there, click subscribe, drop me a comment while you're down there. Follow me on all my social medias. Take care and I will see you guys in the next one.